Okay everybody, this is Nick back on the Get Me Off Grid video blog. Just want to let you know what I'm doing. I'm about to get everything ready so I can start using the distiller for the first time. Uh, but in order to do that, i got to get the fermentation done first. Yes, I'm using commercially available sugar at the moment. Uh, but it's not going to always be like that if all goes according to plan. My idea is to get on the phone and to talk to uh, supermarkets, to talk to uh, food producers, you know, candy makers, whatever, and see if they've got any waste sugar products. So that sweets which are passed, they use by date, you know, boiled sweets or anything, okay? Uh, sugar products, just bags of sugar which have just been laying around for too long in their warehouse, maybe. And see if I can get them to dispose of it to me. I'll tell them, of course, I'm doing bioethanol production at home and I'm doing it in accordance with the 2007 legislation. So hopefully that will be, you know, enable me to be able to get free sugar, because the sugar, you know, if you're making bioethanol at home, the sugar itself is fuel. It's like buying, you know, um, a load of wood to use on a wood stove. Instead, I don't have a wood stove because I'm in a, a flat without a chimney, so I'm going for bioethanol. For that reason, I need to buy the appropriate fuel or, you know, energy form, which is sugar okay and we'll see whether we can turn the energy which comes out of the main socket into something which is three times more i've worked out roughly speaking and my mathematics might be a little off here but i'm not too sure but i should be able to turn the energy which comes uh into the distiller into three times the amount through the use of sugar and yeast Today, as this is the first run, the first fermentation, uh, I'm going to be using a very fast turbo yeast because I'm going to get very impatient with the first go because obviously it's a new thing, I'm quite excited and all the rest of it. But further on down the line, I'm thinking of just using a regular bread yeast and good nutrients, which, which means maybe uh, two to three weeks worth of fermentation time, which is a different situation altogether. So, come with me a second, okay? Right, just a minute. Right, through here. Okay, in here. This is the bathroom, and there we have there we have the equipment which is being sterilized. I'm turning this lid around to, to make sure the whole thing can get done bit by bit, doing both the handle and the business end of the spoon. It's a good sterilizing solution. Got the hydrometer and got the thermometer in there as well. So it's all being done nicely, and it will be nice and clean and germ-free prior to the start of the fermentation. Okay, back through here. Okay, this way, this way. Come on. Oh, don't, know, don't slow down. Alright, so. This is where it's all getting exciting. Now, I've had a few challenges which I've had to overcome creatively. And if you come this way, boom, here we are. Uh, got the distiller right here. Hmm. Now, uh, the tube didn't come with any tap adapter on it. The one which came in the kit itself looks like it fits onto a variety of screw tap, which you'd either have outside or in certain strange varieties of domestic situations that they happen to have in New Zealand, where this still comes from. So, hmm, that gave me a bit of a problem. So, the company very kindly provided me with this, but it had a different adapter on it, didn't fit into the tube, had to go to the... Uh, uh, proverbial tool shed and start wrenching bits off and hoping this would fit in and it fits in okay so that's fine but this itself won't fit on my tap so I've had to get a little bit more creative and I've discovered that one of these which is made by hose lock uh, and is a garden hose adapter will fit quite nicely into the hole so I had to get all that sorted out and arranged first prior to even thinking about starting the first run. Uh, here you see it's still uh, almost fully assembled, but I haven't put these ceramic saddles and copper saddles in here yet. Because I'm going to do that prior to the first run. Uh, so yeah, it's all really rather exciting. I want to time very carefully how long it takes to heat up and go through the process so I can work out how many kilowatt hours are being used up in terms of electricity and then I can work out okay how much you know vaguely how much energy is coming out in the form of bioethanol taking into account the percentage of ethanol which is being produced so 
what I'm going to have to do is to use first and foremost the beer and wine hydrometer. Uh, the purpose of the beer and wine hydrometer is to work out the specific gravity, or in this case the percentage of alcohol, within the wash itself. That's why the first hydrometer is being sterilized. I've got a spirit hydrometer as well, but that comes for after the process when I'm actually getting out the Turbo 500 still and putting it through its paces to see what kind of beauty we can create here. Remember the purpose of this is to progress towards off-grid, okay? So, we're going to do it firstly by the book. The way that the manufacturers say we should be using the right, you know, their varieties of yeast, their varieties of carbon to help to remove the impurities, and also this stuff called Turbo Clear. Now the use of the carbon plus the Turbo Clear plus the specialist yeast also helps to rack up the cost of getting your bioethanol out. Okay? I will therefore have to do some mathematical calculations to work out whether it's actually convenient financially, okay, as well as in terms of energy, to be able to do things that way, and also to, also to do some more micro research into types of yeast. Now, I did see one type of bread yeast, which can still ferment up to 16% um, alcohol by volume, okay, going for about 47 pence a pack. Now, if I can find some good yeast nutrient, which would complement that, then essentially I could do the whole thing a lot cheaper and maybe maybe I still have to use um, the clearing solutions, maybe I still have to use the carbon, I don't know. But I've also got to ask whether there's other forms of carbon I can use or whether I can make my own carbon. Okay? And will it still have the same effects, you know, and I have to test it, use the steel and so on and so forth. Uh, there's a lot to learn. But as I'm going through the process of experimenting, then essentially I'm doing it so you don't have to, to a, certain, to a certain degree. When you start doing bioethanol at home, then it will depend upon, you know, your own personal experiences. You might do things in a different way. Um, submit it as a video response or whatever it is you find out. You know, just build up the body of knowledge which is happening here on YouTube on the subject of domestic bioethanol production. Uh, and once I've been quite successful at using this particular distiller, and using this particular method, these, these types of yeast as well, I will then probably go into researching how one would make a usable distiller for home use rather than just buying a commercial one. Okay, because that's something else that people out there need to know, especially if this is all to do with you know budget usage. Now, the price of these things have come down considerably. Uh, they've only been available in the UK, according to my limited internet research, to the tune of two years ago. Alright, so it's not long history in this country for this type of device. But, distillation's been done in this country for years, okay? So should I go online and check out a few other still plants and try and make some? Yeah, maybe I should. All right, there's, we've got to try and work out how to get this sorted out for everybody. Hypothetically, the price of these things will go down to the price of an oven or a, or a good dehydrator maybe. So with the passage of time, these things might start springing up in your standard domestic environments anyway, especially as there's concerns about energy usage and people, more people wanting to go uh, for cheaper forms of fuel and so on and so forth. So that's my update for the moment. Hope you've enjoyed it. Keep cool, subscribe, rate, comment, share, favorite and all that jazz. And I'll tell you how I'm getting on with the wonderful, amazing and deeply, deeply <laughs> beautiful Turbo 500 distiller. Thank you.